Hi, this is Mike Green. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the features of Riala Banjo. What you just saw was the pattern player in action. We'll get back to that in a minute, but first let's go over some of the basic features. With Riala Banjo, you can play notes just like with any other sample instrument. Those are the blue keys. Now normally the lowest note on a banjo is a D, but we went all the way down to a C. A little extra range is always handy. Now there are five strings on a banjo. There's the D string, which we went to a C, but it's still it's the low D string. There's the G string, then there's the B string, and then there's a higher D string, and then the high G string. For each of these strings, we sampled all the way up the fretboard. This gives us the ability to play in various fret positions. And in fact, we included key switches. These are these yellow key switches, or you can use this menu and you can play in various fret positions. You can have the banjo open, which is the most common way to have it, or play from the first fret position, which is sort of like if you had a capo at the first fret, or second fret position, and on up the fretboard. It's a little bit darker sound, of course, as you go up the fretboard. And you'll notice with our graphics that his hand moves up the fretboard to give you a little extra indication of what's going on. Again, most of the time a banjo player will be in open position, so unless you're sure that you want it higher up the neck, I'd leave it open. Now, with Riala Banjo, we recorded round robins as well as loud and soft dynamics, but we also recorded slides up and slides down. This is useful because a banjo player often slides into one note or another. Did you hear that at the end of the phrase? Instead of each note being picked like this, we did a little slide. Banjo players do this a lot where they might throw in a second and lead that into the third. And maybe they'll throw in a sixth and have that slide down into the fifth. Now, a banjo player will typically do a slide like this if he's playing two notes in a row that are either a second apart or a minor second apart. So, we programmed an auto legato feature into Riala Banjo that automatically detects whether an interval is a second or a minor second, and if it is, it plays a slide. If it's a larger interval, then it plays discrete notes. So you can play a pattern and the auto legato feature will take care of where to put the slides. If you don't want this to happen, then of course you can turn off this feature, in which case all notes will be picked. Now, whether the auto legato switch is on or off, you can still always force a legato by holding this B key, the one below middle C, then any notes played while this key is held will have slides into them. With slide, without slide. Okay, that's enough about legato slides. Now let's move on to the articulation switch where we select between straight sounds, which is what we've been hearing, and the mute sound. This is mostly useful for this sort of effect. In this little piece you're gonna hear, the first part is with the straight sound, and of course the second part is with the mute. Then over here we have the reverb section. There's a switch to turn it on and off, as well as a knob to select how much reverb you want. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that. So now let's look at the pattern player. The way that this works is you'll notice that we have two octaves of green keys that are above the playable blue keys. If you play a chord anywhere in this section, then the pattern player will automatically play an authentic sounding banjo pattern for that chord that you just played. It doesn't matter what inversion you play, the software automatically recognizes what chord it is that you just played. And it can not only recognize major chords, but also minor chords, as well as dominant seventh chords, and minor seventh chords, and even suspended fourths. And again, you can play any inversion of these chords in any key, and it syncs with your sequencer. Not only that, you have a choice of six different pattern styles. These are selectable from the interface or by these red key switches. 
What we've been hearing so far is pattern style one, which is probably the most all-purpose of the pattern styles. Pattern style two, it's actually my favorite. It has a little bit more of a down-home kind of style with some extra twang to it. Pattern style three is a higher pattern. This uses higher notes. This is a pretty cool pattern as is, but where it can really come in handy is if you're playing a more normal lower pattern and then you kind of want to set it apart. Check out this example. I'm going to start with pattern style two for two bars and then I'm going to move up to three and you'll hear how it kind of gives it a little extra punch. How about that? You just play a bunch of chords, let the pattern player do its thing. It's a kick. Anyway, pattern four is another all-purpose sort of pattern. Pattern styles five and six are meant for more rock kind of applications. Think Mumford and Sons. Now, for bluegrass and country, the Riala banjo pattern player really comes in handy, because otherwise those patterns can be kind of tricky. With rock, you can use the pattern player, or it's often not that hard to just play them yourself. Check it out. I've got a pre-recorded rock sequence here, but the banjo that you're going to hear will be Riala banjo played live. Like I said, bluegrass patterns can be tricky, but rock kind of stuff, those are pretty easy to play yourself. So back to the pattern player, let's try this in a song. I've got a pre-recorded sequence, just kick drum and upright bass and I'm just gonna play chords and Riala Banjo will take care of the rest. This is gonna be pattern style two and I'm gonna hit the last feature that I haven't yet explained and that's this animation reset button. Uh-oh, the dog disappears. Let's hope he comes back. Put Riala Banjo into your life. Head on over to Rialatone.com and join the banjo revolution. <laughs>